So what are four-letter words? They're offensive. They're taboo. They're not safe to talk about. Today I want to talk to you about death. D-E-A-T-H. Five letters. And yet we treat it like one of those words. But does it have to be that way? After working as a cardiac nurse and a hospice nurse, I've been with countless people at the end of their life. Some were expected, some unexpected, but regardless of the circumstance, most of them hadn't talked about their experience as a dying person. One of them, I'll call Jan, had chronic obstructive pulmonary disease and just entered hospice when we first met. If you don't know much about end-stage COPD, just imagine for a moment you're a diver entirely dependent on a tank and a tube to breathe. If anything happens to your oxygen supply, you will panic. It's a terrifying way to live. The day we met, Jan looked at me with a mix of desperation and anxiety and said, I just want something to make me sleep. When I lay down, I can't stop thinking about what's happening to my body and what will happen to me when I die. I said, I can absolutely get you some medicine to help you sleep, but when you wake up, those questions will still be there. We can talk about those too if you'd like. But to Jan, death was a four-letter word, and so she slept. Medicine gave her physical comfort and quieted her mind until she died a few weeks later. I was left wondering, does talking about death and facing what we stand to lose head on actually help? Especially when you have a progressive disease like Jan and you know you're going to slowly lose your ability to do even simple things like call your daughter on the phone or go to the bathroom by yourself. What if we could have talked about death when she still had some control over her life? Even if it doesn't feel safe, could it actually create the heart space needed for profound healing and forgiveness to happen? Does it give us the insight to process fear and grief about dying and achieve peace? The end of my mom's story a few years later helped shed some light. This is us, we're smiling here, but when I was 15, my mom's life had evolved into such chaos that a judge agreed I was better suited to care for myself. Legal emancipation at 15 almost never happens. My mom and I spent the rest of our lives bouncing between trying to re rebuild our relationship and unable to speak for months at a time. Talk was our four letter word. But in the last years of her life, when we were on speaking terms, we actually had lots of conversations about death. She had debilitating rheumatoid arthritis, as well as lung and heart disease. Like Jan, she struggled to breathe and was oxygen dependent. Unlike Jan, she wanted answers. What will happen to my body? What will my limitations be? How do I figure out what quality of life means to me? For my mom, control was her comfort and knowledge gave her some control. Talking about emotions and feelings though, that remained dangerous territory. In September 2017, we had not been speaking for one year when I got the call. Mom was in the hospital with blood clots in her lungs. When I got to the hospital, she was in a lot of pain. She was frail, bruised, and too tired to eat her favorite milkshake. She knew that her body was fading. She struggled to breathe, let alone to speak. So she asked me to talk for her, and I agreed. And in that moment, a profound shift occurred. I believe authors Groves and Clauser captured what happened. As the brain's limbic system squirts beneficial neuropeptides into the body, along with the release of negative emotions, the act of forgiveness has a salutary physiological effect. Translated into English, not only did she break the power of our four-letter word, but she released the lockdown on her emotional journey with death. And that had a very real physical effect as well. 
her body softened, her heart opened, my heart opened as well. And we both experienced tenderness that had long since left our relationship. Painful emotions gave way to physical peace, trust, and forgiveness. And then we both fell asleep. I woke up at 4 a.m. to find that my mom had had a stroke and the right side of her body was totally limp. Her speech was so slurred, I could barely understand her cry, more pain, please. Doctors arrived and focused on saving her body. Quality of life was never mentioned. But she and I both knew the best possible outcome would be no way for her to live. So we spoke up, I delivered the words, and arranged for comfort care. We made sure that everyone had a chance to say goodbye, that she got last rites from a priest, and that she was kept comfortable and free from pain. That night as I held her and I sang her to sleep, she took her final breaths. My mom gave me a gift that day, a proof that death is not a four-letter word. There is power in thinking about the reality of life in a human body, which also includes the death of that body. There's power in talking about it. It's the power to meet death on your own terms. And when you do, you can craft a life worth living every day. Thank you.